Bu Rosida, please. Oke, okay. uh, makasih Bu Aziza. I would start this event, yes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our first international guest lecture. We are from Persepsi, which is stand for Perhimpunan Ilmuwan Sosial Ekonomi Peternakan Seluruh Indonesia, or in English, Association of Social Economic of Animal Husbandry Scientists in Indonesia. My name is Rosida Fajri Rinanti. I am from Tribuana Tunggadewi University, majoring in Social Economic of Animal Husbandry. It is an honor for me to be your master of ceremony in this event, Introduction to Qualitative Research by Professor Birendra Kumar, today, June the 6th, 2023. First of all, let's say thanks to the Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for letting us together in today's event with good and stable state of health. I would like to welcome Professor Birendra Kumar as our speaker, Dr. Sukiharto as representative of the Head of Persepsi, and Dr. Siti Aziza as the Head of Persepsi in East Java region, and as our moderator today, and all of our audiences for attending this event. I would read out the rundown on today's event, which is divided into four sections. First is opening. Second is welcoming speech by Dr. Sukiharto. Third is guest lecture, Introduction to Qualitative Research by Professor Birendra Kumar. Fourth is closing. Without any further ado, let's start and open the guest lecture by saying basmalah. For the second is welcoming speech by Dr. Sukiharto as representative of the head of Persepsi. Dr. Sukiharto, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. The Honorable Speaker, Professor Pirendra Kumar. Good morning, sir. The Honorable Chairman of Indonesian Livestock, Socio-Economic Scientist of uh, Indonesia Association, is Java Chapter, Dr. Aziza, and also to all members and participants in this uh, international webinar. Good morning. Uh, first, uh, we would like to say sorry from the chairman of uh, Indonesian Livestock uh, Socioeconomic Scientist Association, Professor Budi Kuntoro. He was not able to come to attend to this very prestigious meeting because uh, now he is on trip uh, going to South Korea. He really extend the warm and respected regards to all members and also participants to this kind of uh, very uh, prestigious meeting. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of the duties of the scientists is to deliver knowledge and science to the society. Uh, science is a conscious effort to investigate, to discover, and also to improve human understanding all of various aspects of uh, reality in human nature. Qualitative research is uh, one way to increase human understanding of various aspects in life of the human being, naturally, contextually, and in holistic manner. It's really uh, our chairman of Persepsi really appreciate this kind of meeting. And he said to me this morning, extend really high appreciation to East Java chapter of Persepsi, who really active conducting this kind of meeting. I think this is not only the first that uh, East Java chapter did, but there were several kind of meetings, similar meetings that uh, Dr. Aziza as a chair of Persepsi already did and there were very successful implemented uh, communication among the social economic 
uh, scientists in Indonesia, especially in the aspect of uh, animal science. Full of hope, the academic program this morning will be successful to expand knowledge and insight from the different languages and cultures. As a chairman of Persepsi, Professor Budi Kuntoro also really uh, mentioned to me that we need experts from other parts of the world to see and to compare the dynamic of science, as well as opening up networks and collaboration to conduct a joint research and publication. In the end, the chairman of Indonesia Livestock Socioeconomic Scientists Association, Persepsi, sent greetings to all members and appreciated and appreciate to academic activities this morning. The East Java chapter again, he mentioned to me this morning, has so far been very active in carrying out and carrying out the activities to increase members' knowledge and capacity. He also gave a very uh, very clear mention to me this morning. He said, science will always make the earth more peaceful. That's why we gather together here in order to improve the science. And he said, more science, more peaceful of the world. Congratulations and thank you. Very good. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Sukiharto, for the welcoming speech. Next, step on the following agenda is the guest lecture by Professor Birindra Kumar with the title Introduction of Qualitative Research. I would read a brief CV of Professor Birindra Kumar. Professor Birindra Kumar is a coach and a trainer in public speaking. He is a former scholar in residence in Dr. Rajendra Prasad, Central Agriculture University in Pusa, Bihar. He is also a former director in residential instruction, Kamdin in Bihar Agricultural University in Sabur, Bagalpur. He is a former direction communication in University of Agriculture Technology in Patnagar, and he was a dean in agribusiness <coughs> management in Patnagar. This guest lecture will be moderated by Dr. Siti Aziza, the head of Persepsi in East Java region. Dr. Siti Aziza and Professor Birindra Kumar, the stage is yours. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Uh... Bu Dr. Rosida, yeah, uh, uh, I will uh, share screen the PowerPoint, Prof. Birendra, and uh, we have one hour to send the materials to the students, and then we can have a discussion after that. Yeah, uh, I will share uh, the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Dr. Siti. Am I audible? Am I yes. audible? Yeah. Yes, very sir. Good. We can hear you. Yeah. Very good. I'm very excited to talk at this forum, Persepsi. I'm glad to know that my friend, Dr. Siti, is president of this Persepsi, or head of this Persepsi. I'm very excited to hear the representative of the president it's not the first time that I'm speaking for <clears throat> the university or for the students of Indonesia at this forum. Two years back, I had opportunity and I felt very good. And I got myself invited once again. Thank you very much, Dr. Siti, for giving this opportunity. You're welcome. <clears throat> Esteemed professors, teachers, Master of Ceremony, and my dear students, I'm very glad to be here today. Yesterday, we had World Environment Day. And 
the environment is both physical and mental. I'm very glad about the rituals that were followed and master of ceremony said that all of you have good health. I also wish all of you have peace of mind, salamat. All of you should have positive mentality. The, the, the purpose of knowledge is joy, joy in life. I want you to smile. I want you to relax. I want you to have fun. Because my lecture as a professor of communication is not about forcing talk on you. It's about creating a, a means to joy. And that is what qualitative research is. Qualitative research is not about asking people on a questionnaire that I am going to talk. This is about understanding people through various means so that we have understanding. I want you, I want you to understand that I'll be sharing experiences. In my 40 years career with students, whenever I have guided research, and my students have used this method also, apart from the quantitative, they have become knowledgeable. They have become more sensitive. They have become more human. They want to care for the respondents. They want to care for the, for the informants who give them information. It's a very special kind of relationship that grows between the researcher and the researched. There is little difference. You do not force your ideas on them, rather try to understand. And on the way, you create a relationship and learn. So I'm talking about a very human phenomenon where we do social research to create a positive relationship with the respondents or with the client. This is very important today. One of the greatest rural development experts said that there is very little relevant social data on rural areas in the world because most of the scientists do not find time to go to the remotest areas, to talk with illiterate people, to go in the weathers that are harsh, either winter season, or they, they, they do not want to go in the nights when the situations are very different. So we have little social data about rural areas. The data that we gather is when we go in fair weather with our nice dresses, protective dresses, and talk with them, they say that this is exploitation. Rural development depends on accurate data. Planning depends on data. Welfare activities depends on data. What needs to be done? How can we have correct data? accurate data so that we can plan in a better manner for the next 20 years or 30 years. We can have a vision about what kind of villages do we want? What kind of livestock do we want? What kind of food situation do we want? So my dear students, this talk today is not just about research. This is about the call of the times in development, having the right perspective, the right data. Research is essential. You are representative of the <clears throat> perception. The Mr. Su Dr. Sugiato also told that science is essential. The president has sent message that good, good understanding of scientific methods will lead us to a better day, better future. But social research is a different genre. It's different altogether. It's not like physical research. In physical research, a human being is dealing with materials. In case of chemistry, it is chemicals. In case of biology, it is, it is the animals or the biological materials. In case of physics, it is physical material. But here we are dealing with a very precious human being. Human beings are dynamic. They keep changing. What I do in the morning, I am different in the evening and night. With age also, I am changing. With a different culture, there are different kind of people, different kind of opinion. So it's a very dynamic and interesting field that is social research. It is not just going and asking questions. It is understanding this variety 
the diversity that the people have. Indonesia is a very good example of multicultural country, multi-religious country, multilingual country, and so is India. And so understanding the different kind of people is not possible through one lens. And that is my way of understanding. But we have to have a different kind of lenses to understand the reality. So social research is about getting this inner perspective, insider's perspective, insider view of how people in that very culture feel, how the animal owners feel, how the tribal people feel. From outside, it looks very different. But for them, it is life. It is interesting. So I'm saying that social research is interesting because we have to do interaction with people. And mind you, this is very challenging. If you are young and going to talk with old people, you will be perceived differently. There will be a barrier, communication barrier. If you are going with your modern dresses, they will look at you with awe, oh, with strangeness. And I'm not sure if they will tell you the truth. So how do I train myself as a human being to become a true researcher in the society? What kind of language should I have? What kind of dress should I have? What kind of courtesy should I have? How should I open up with them? Shall I sit down on the earth as they do? I will sit on the chair. I will greet the way I do in the college. I'll, I'll greet the way the culture demands. My dear friends, very interesting to become a social researcher and understand these aspects of the culture. So today is the day I'll be talking about these qualitative aspects of social research. I have already said that means you need to be sensitive, sensitive as to how other people perceive me, how my speaking will affect others. Dr. Siti and my dear esteemed teachers, let me tell you, in India, we have a very, very important society and that is called as Indian Society of Applied Behavioral Science. Very interesting. And they give sensitivity training to development workers that how become conscious, how your face, your dress, the way you speak affects other people. And how other people's behavior, because if you want to research on people, you have to control yourself. So this is about developing a different kind of sensitivity towards the other people. It's about measuring not physical data, but social or mental data, that is attitude. Attitude is something that is in the mind. How do I look at the world? And I cannot read the attitude. So how to measure this? How to measure emotion, feelings of the people? How to get true opinion of the people? You know, the democracy, democracy is dependent on elections and opinion of the people are very important. In a large democracy like India, they conduct a lot of opinion surveys to know about what is the people's choice about the leaders. And often they go wrong because it is very difficult to understand the opinion of the people just by asking questions. So what I'm saying is all social data cannot be measured. In social sciences, we have gone ahead we have developed scales, measurements, attitude scales, opinion surveys, but still everything is not possible to put into numbers because a lot of it is emotion, feeling, attached with our spiritual being. And that is why it is very interesting to have methods that will give us perspective about how do others feel. I told you that human nature is dynamic. It changes continuously through the span of life, through the span of the day, from culture to culture. And still it is possible to measure them, to understand them. And there is question of privacy, not privacy. I'm sorry, privacy. That you cannot ask everything to every person. You must value the importance of their own personal data. So how do I go about social research? If it is so sensitive, if it is so much in the mind of the people, in the culture of the people, 
how should I proceed next, please? Yes. So complexity is there in the procedure of doing research in social area. Even the livestock research, I will tell you a little later that how one of my researches on developing a newsletter for livestock owners faced with many troubles as far as survey research is concerned. So, so, so people cannot be understood just by asking questions. You need to interact. You need to open them up. You need to verify the data through many different sources. If I ask people certain things, write it, analyze it, it's not sure that it's true. So what are the other methods? What are the other ways to do triangulation or to do verification, to, to defend my data? I have seen best of the thesis. In India, extension education has gone very much ahead. They use a lot of, lot of measurements and quantitative techniques. But when I go for examination and ask the students, why did it happen? They are not able to tell me the reasons. But the data are very good. The analysis is top notch. They go into the best of journals that are possible. But the student is not able to tell me why this particular extension management system is the best that they have found. The student was rewarded by the Indian Council of Agriculture Research. But I failed to understand why this has happened. So this why. This region behind the phenomenon that we are studying can come only through qualitative research. Can come through the data that we gather through other methods. And I'll be talking about them. Next, please. Yes. What do you see here? I don't know. What does it look like? What kind of occasion this might be? Just by looking from outside, you may not understand. I do not know how, my, how many of my Indonesian students can tell me what is happening here. Can anybody, can anybody write in chat? What do they see? Yeah, I'm looking at your chat box. I request each one of you to write something. What students, uh, you can uh, write in Indonesian, then I will uh, translate for you. Okay, anything, yeah. any way that you write. Yeah. Language is not Kira -kira, Kira-kira ini ada kejadian apa atau peristiwa apa? Silakan dijawab. Kira-kira saja. Nanti saya akan translate. Demo action? What is this? Uh, Dr. City? Demo action. Yeah. What is this? Demonstration? Demonstration. Yeah. Okay. Demonstration. Okay. Anybody And else? Anybody very else? Very nice. Very nice. Yes, sir. Demonstration. Okay. okay. Demonstration. JG. Ada lagi? Yes. Uh -huh. Jessica. Gabriel, very good. Anybody demonstration. else? Okay, got this. This is demonstration. No, this is not demonstration. This is a marriage ceremony. Cultural perception. This is a marriage ceremony in which the youths are there and there is a DJ playing music. All, all of them want to dance. So they are deciding which music to play. This is called cultural perception. So our eyes are colored. We see what we have experienced in our life. How to decolor them. How to have a perspective. Okay, next. Next, please. Yeah. So <clears throat> there, is a, there is a science of ethnography. It comes from anthropology. And this science says that whatever is happening outside is part of the culture. What you speak, what you dress, the way you see, every behavior has been learned through the culture. And so the, the culture can be understood only through intimate and personal interaction. And every ethnographer is trained how to learn about the other members of the group or the world through some methods. Next, please. So ethnography is the study of culture. And what do they do? They study culture <clears throat> by, by unknowing what people know, what people think, and what kind of things they have. That means not only the, the what they say, but also how do they behave? What kind of language are telling? 
what what words are coming more in their language you know it's very interesting anthropologists when they have to research or ethnographers when they have to do a social research they go into the villages or the communities and try to observe what are the people talking most what what words are being used most commonly and they want to link with that that means culture or the way people behave cannot be understood only by asking but also by observing by listening by being with them by behaving as they do and then there'll be an empathy there'll be a sensitivity and understanding will start so our social research in the communities is more about studying another culture you tell it or not if you want to understand how much people know about modern live stock knowledge this is also a cultural aspect that means knowledge of the people people already have knowledge it has been proved in extension education and other social sciences that indigenous knowledge is very important and then we have we understand that farmers do not know anything so how should we know how can we know what they already know their indigenous knowledge in india there has been <coughs> researchers who have developed techniques to know about people's knowledge and they are not through survey or questionnaire alone they go and sit in the villages <coughs> try to understand the stories of the elders the past times and from that they they develop the indigenous knowledge next please yeah so ethnographers the researcher of the culture they go where people live they try to make residence there in in masters they, they are given 6 months and phd the ethnographers are given 2 years of residence in the culture they make residence first they randomly talk with people they do not start with written questionnaire they go observe the their behavior their eating their ceremonies their agriculture they they talk with people and they try to find out people with whom they can easily communicate so if i go to indonesia my first informant would be dr siti ajiza because it is comfortable for me to talk with her then the students some of the students that i have seen here or i have met in 2020 i have talked with them because it is comfortable for me to talk with them in little little broken english or whatever so that means they start with key informants people who are knowledgeable about that culture and can also interact with the outsider that is their gateway to the culture they they conduct different kinds of interviews and it may be informal like conversation they just have conversation about how how do your classes go how do you eat in the hostel what kind of jobs you get you just they just talk to open people up they eat with them they gossip with them you will ask me why eating is essential why gossiping is essential in research because they believe that when people become relaxed when people become easy they will open up they will give you the truth insider data until the time they are not relaxed they will take you as outsider somebody who is from another culture and he should not be told everything so that means you engage yourself in experiencing that culture and this is a very disciplined and intimate way of study i will tell you how a systematic way is developed to do that manage their time manage their resources manage the two years in case of phd in the community and collect all the data document them analyze them there are a lot of systematic steps involved if you have heard me up to this what i have told is that social researches are very interesting because they are dealing with human interaction a human being trying to understand about another human being 
and that can happen through many different methods. Second, I said that people are dynamic. They change. They change from morning to evening. They change from childhood to the old age. They change from culture to culture. How to capture the reality of human being is a question of questions. Third, I said that ethnographers have found out a way to understand other people's behavior. And they do it in a very systematic and intimate manner. A lot of observation is there. Next, please. Ah, this is from Indonesia. What is happening? I cannot understand many things here. Can somebody tell me what is happening here? Yeah, kira kira apa? Yeah, discussion is going on. Oh, very nice. Yeah, okay. And Devita okay. has said yes. Discussion. Asri is also telling discussion. What kind of discussion is this? I cannot understand. I see people in dresses, and I people in not in dresses. So can tell somebody tell me what is this? This is a cultural symbol. Yeah, drinking, drinking coffee, coffee together. together. Okay. Why do farmers drink coffee in the mid of the uh, field? It's not happening in India. Farmers do not take coffee. Oh, Rosia said, Rosiada said, extension. What do you mean by extension here? Agricultural extension. So oh, are, are, are the farmers sitting here to interact about what? I don't understand. I'm an outsider. I do not know this culture. Okay. Okay. Usual gathering. So do the farmers gather like this every time? Yeah. In Indonesia, yes. Uh, we have, uh, yeah. uh, they do? And do I guess that there are some company people here or they're all farmers? City? Uh, I think uh, some of them is uh, government officers. Oh, they have come there and yeah. they are sharing information. Industry, uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe uh, from okay. industry too, yeah. So, you know, my problem as person from another culture is Question, my, I have a question. Why there is a house in the mid of the field? We don't have this. Okay, second question is, all of them are in dressage. Who are they? Yeah. Uh, checking data, okay. They are having coffee. In our place, farmers do not have coffee in the field. They bring <laughs> their own food. So you see, this is the misperception. If you don't have, you would not have told me, I would not have understood. So that means our eyes see, but they do not see correct thing because they are colored by our own cultural programming. The culture that we can Very nice. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah. Anybody can guess? It's very hard. It's a very much Indian culture. Cultural symbols are there. But any guess? What could be this? Rakira <laughs> Apaini. This is in India, right? Yeah, this is India. Yeah. What is Tham? City, what is Tham? Uh, 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 Tom. 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 Uh, I think, oh, yeah, Tom. Rashiada. Good guess. Praise for pray. Yes. Though it is not Tom, something similar to this. Next. In India, we burn Please. the bodies. Dead bodies, we burn. We don't keep Toms. Okay. Worship. Funeral. Temple, funeral. No, it is not. It is not. It's not even... Grave. Uh, grave. No, it's not a grave. Offering. Yes. Gadis. Gadis. Can you speak something? What did you say? Temple. Gadis? Yes. Idang. Idang no. Puji. Temple. Yes. This is a temple. This, this is, is the temple of a temple. Very right, Muhammad. Muhammad Gadis? Gadis. Gadis. Yes. Hmm. Gadis. How did you find out it is a temple? This is the place uh, to offering. Wonderful. Yeah. How do you know, Gadis? Gimana kok bisa tahu? Gak bisa tahu. Have you known before? Kamu udah pernah tahu sebelumnya? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Wonderful. She knows. Before. Yeah. Gadis She knows is before. very much sensitive to the culture, and so is Muhammad, and so are the other people who was oh, often watch Davita. Indian films, yeah, that's great. I, I did not understand that. Yes, films. Films are great educators, I hope. 
there are more films in the classroom good this is a symbol of sun god so the the women of the village they offer the prayers to god and this place is a symbol they stand there and you know in india it is very much ecologically friendly they worship the trees because trees give life so this is one of the trees that give lot of oxygen and they 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 worship this so very good so that means to understand other people we have to understand the cultural symbols we have to train our eyes to decipher that and many of our students are very sensitive to do that congratulations there is no communication gap of our city our students are communicating very well next please mm. next please. i'm so yes. happy it feels i am in my own classroom very good so the culture here we are not only trying to know the numerical data but also values what is important for the people what kind of beliefs do they have what kind of relationship is there between the different aspects of their living artifacts means things that they wear things that they use things that they decorate their house with the kind of rules that they follow the language all of this is part of the culture so in an anthropology and especially in ethnography every student is given a task that go and interview somebody who is not from your culture so in one of the classes of research i asked my students go try to talk with a beggar in the market and understand his culture understand his perception about money perception about people go talk with a laborer so from the different culture subculture that you come from you interview and that is very interesting every time students come with different terms they come with different kind of understanding and they say that i had not understood that this could be the life of a beggar that he is also having money he is also having a bank balance he also think about wealth management so friends what i am telling is going to another culture another country going to people who are not of the same age or socio economic background gives us a lot of exposure a lot of knowledge knowledge is not only in the books and cultural knowledge is held by elders youth people who are very old they have lot of knowledge about the past how this has happened what kind of developments have happened how we can prevent our youth from going you know awry so all the members of the society they hold some kind of knowledge about the culture and what i mean by culture is the knowledge the skill the rules the way of eating the way of behaving so with this perspective we go on to next city next yeah and this is what ethnography does this describes people's life and work this huge is a standard process to live and learn learn in the field work that means when for one month or two months i go into the field from day 1 to day 30 what should i do how should i systematically manage my time i give you an example when i was working in africa i was teaching extension to mid career workers people who had already work in the field they come to the university to take undergraduate degree and they have research senior research in the final year in this research they have to go back to their own field where they work and find out a research problem and get it verified by their head of department that this is a worthwhile research and then they will come and defend their research in the university they will stay in the field for 3 months and time to time will go and visit but the they have a very set rule that when they go, go into the field they will maintain three diaries in one diary they will write the daily log like morning to evening what they have done in another diary they will write description of the works that have been done and kind of data that have been collected 
And in the third diary would be an emotional diary. How do they feel good? What they feel bad about? That means we have given them a rule as to when you are there, there will be records. There will be video records. There will be audio records. There will be management of the time. Where will you stay? Where will we eat food? And in between, we'll go and visit and see how the research is progressing. So what I'm saying is ethnography is just not going into the another culture, dancing, living, and coming back. But there is a certain discipline about it, how the true data would be collected. And when you come back from there, you learn a lot about how to do a good research, how to interact with people, how to observe people, how to decipher things of another culture. So that means even if you forget ethnography, what we remember is in our social science that we are studying, we can have some of these things of staying in the community, having a residence in the community, managing my time, recording things I am doing, so that all of this become part of my research. And I tell you, my very experience is that four or five of my students have become very knowledgeable after doing this research. They are very sensitive about the community. They have taken development works. Few of them have taken development works. Some of them who went to corporate offices, they are very much sensitive to the farmer's problems and always want to have policy and programs because they have realized by staying there for three months during their master and six months during PhD, they have realized that the research is not only about collecting data, but about understanding people. Next, please. So the systematic ways, you enter into the community. That means when you have done all the review work, when you have understood your problem and your guide, Dr. Siti says that now go collect data. You have to go into the community and find a residence where from you can conveniently move around in the village. When one of my students was working in a very remote village and knowing about the, the, the traditional practices, I said that you go to the village and do not come to the hostel unless you have completed. So two months, you will be there, one. Two, I told them that you should have your own residence. If you cannot hire, you stay in a common place. When he went, he was 23 years young person, male, and he said, I have many offers from the youth to stay with them. I said, no, do not stay with them. He stay in a common place. So he stayed in a school. I said, do not accept offers from other people of food unless you are able to compensate them. So that you do not have any favorites. You do not get biased. That means entering into the community is the first step. And there are questions from the community people as to who is he or who is she? Why has she come? What is her purpose? So people start gossiping about you. How will you establish your identity there? You can tell, you can get a letter from Dr. City or the university about who you are and why you have gone. That is one way. You can get a reference about a village elder and go and talk with him and he can introduce. That means when you enter into a strange community, there are questions about your everything. I do not know whether my student is listening or not. Dr. Rasmi Saxena is a great trainer and she, in her PhD, she asked me that she will work on gender sensitive training for women. And for that, she chose a place that she was very much familiar with, that she will go stay in the village, interact with the woman and get the data. It took her two months to open up with the girls or women because the male folks would not allow them, allow her to interact with the woman. Why, you know, because she was wearing modern dresses. She had no, 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 nothing to cover her head. And the villagers said that she will spoil our women. And they did not want her to interact with the women of the village. Entry into community, what should I do? What should I not do? Should be understood beforehand. Residence in the village, 
the kind of food they eat, the kind of living condition that they have, you have to adapt to them. You cannot always complain, water is not there, electricity is not there, the stove is not working right. All this you have to manage on your own. Movement into the community. How will you move about into houses? You have to understand the cultural protocol as to what do the villagers allow outsiders? Will they allow inside? Will they allow outside? Or only at the community places? And finally, how to find key informants. When you enter into a new community, you have to find out a person who can speak your language or who can understand you and is ready to help you. So friends, what I'm saying is ethnographic field work is a very systematic process. I want my students to react and tell something about ethnographic field work. Where do they see problem? Where do they say opportunity? Can they think of a situation in which they can do this kind of field work? Students, I had very good response from you in last two visuals. I want you to put your mind and tell me what kind of problem or opportunity do you see in this? City, can you, can you explain to them my question? I want their reactions, how they can apply it. Do yeah. they say any opportunity? Ya, kira-kira ya, bagaimana, kira-kira uh, bisa nggak kalian memecahkan sebuah masalah dengan penelitian etnografi? Kira-kira gimana? Lihat aja di sekeliling kalian. Anything that comes to your mind, everything is accepted. Ada ide nggak? I had promised I would not lecture, I would interact. Nggak ada nilai kok. Ayo. Silakan. Ya, Syafiq. Bapak Syafiq. Ya, Syafiq. Yes. Uh, I'm a PhD student actually in uh, EBD. I'm doing my uh, doctoral program in regular planning. And I'm doing my research about the smart mobility in, in small town in South of Tangram. And the problem is uh, the data is not really complete. And uh, I started doing my research with a mixed method. It means doing the quantities first and doing the quality after. Yeah? But the problem is uh, You know, in Indonesia, the government is not really interesting about the research, you know. So they're not really interesting about how to to make better because they know the problem, but they not they not want to support this. So the, this is a problem. So when you're doing research in Indonesia, the problem is that uh, the decision making is not the academic people. That the decision making is from the political people. So that is the problem. So when you're doing research, they're not really interesting, uh, especially from government people. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Very good. Siti, can you, can, you, can you give me a brief on what Safiq said? Well, I think uh, he's doing his uh, thesis or dissertation. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I cannot hear uh, the... Her, her, his his voice, what is yeah. <laughs> yeah, his voice clearly, but I think... Uh, Maybe you can write down the but Shafiq, maybe you can write down in the chat room. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just uh, the brief the brief problem is when you're doing research, so the people in Indonesia are usually using the quantity research, eh? Not the quality. So only only few doing the quality research. So there's a problem when you're doing research, you need the like, uh, you know, interview, uh, maybe SGD or something like that. But the problem when you're doing that, for especially for the public uh, facilities or something like that, you need people from government to support you, you know, at least from information or the data or something like that, maybe the opinion from, from the, the, the people who higher position in the government. So the problem when you're doing research, you know, support you. So this problem, I think. So, yeah, yeah, I understand you? now. Shafiq, okay. I understand. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Safiq. Yes, what he says is that there is no culture of doing this kind of qualitative research. So when you go to the field, you need support. Do I hear right? City? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think the program is uh, always uh, top down, but never yeah. bottom up. Yeah. I understand. And yeah. you also said that academic people are not consulted. And, yeah. I, and very right. Safiq, very right. And I'm very lucky that in, in Ethiopia, my students found a lot of support from their host organization. So there was a collaborative arrangement between the university and the government department. Very good. Safiq, this is the real problem. Uh, Kasri said something that she knows about or he knows about. Kasri. Okay. okay. Kasri, are you there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did you say? You know ethnographic research? I have an idea about uh, ethnography. Uh, we can research about uh, culture in society such as custom, uh, habit, law, or are and religion and language or, or in Indonesia is so heterogeneous. We so relevant to uh, research about uh, ethnography, uh, this ethnography this uh, about ethnographic uh, studies in what? In what did you say, Kasri? Uh, about uh, custom uh, habit uh, and religion, religion and to to Indonesian about okay. ethnography. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Thank thank research much, in Steve. religion, yeah. Yes. In religion, yeah. I was thinking yeah. about that because yes, when I read now. more and more about Indonesia, I found that there are so many yes. diverse religions there. So many diverse religions, religions there. there. Yes. Yeah. It's possible. It's possible to become sensitive to them and understand them. And there are intricacies, problem also. Can I enter into the community? Will they allow me to stay there? Will I be able to communicate with them? Very nice. Thank you very much, Kasri. You look so young and dynamic. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay, next, next, please. Dr. City. Yeah. So these key informants, my dear friends, are the first source of information or the main source of information. I do not go to a new people. I do not go to a new village or a new community without help. I try to find out three or four people who are willing to give me inside data. Do you know in every community, there are people who like to talk to strangers. They're very much curious people. They are residents in the local area. They have experience. And they are willing to cooperate. They are willing to talk with them, interested. So ethnography says that they are like teachers. Respect them, identify them, and use them because they have the cultural knowledge. There are two things they say about using key informants that nothing comes from for free. Whatever you get the information has a value. So even if you don't pay them, at least treat them well, respect them. In many ethnographic tradition, there is a rule that you should, you should give lunch or you should treat them with snacks or whatever. You must give something in return. Taking one side, is not the human way of doing things. So these key informants are the main sources. If we have identified the good key informants, we have a source for getting into the culture next. They are not everything. They are only preliminary sources of information. Next. This and many more methods. Interviews, a lot of open interviews, open interviews or in-depth interviews where you do not have questions framed beforehand. You talk like conversation. So if I have to interview Kasri, I start with, oh, where do you stay? What kind of <clears throat> study are you doing? Please tell me a little about your place of stay. Can you describe with me about your everyday routine? Like this, they are very open questions, but the answer that Kasri will give, I will start the question from there. It's more like good conversation. So in-depth interviewing, open interviewing are the first sources of information in collecting data, not structured. Structured interview, the, the schedules or questionnaire come in the last. So first we want to become conversant about the local people and their different aspects. Then only we, be, we make questionnaire. 
So know the difference in quantitative data. After doing review, we visit the place and start making our questionnaire. In this, we enter the community, we talk with the informants, we have in-depth interviewing, and in the end, if we feel it is essential, we may make questionnaire to verify some of these data. Our, our major source is observation. Observation. Observing what do they wear. Observing how do they spend their time in. Observing what do they give more emphasis to. Observation can be both participant or non-participant. What is participant? Where you stay like a member of the society. What is non-participant? You are allowed as an outsider to be in certain places and observe. Third is focused group discussion. I will talk about it a little later. This FGD or focused group discussion, talking with 10, 15 members about their divergent views about something is a very good way of consumer data analysis also. In marketing also they use it. And case study that is having a few cases a few similar samples and going into depth, making story about them and trying to find out everything for cause and effect analysis. What I'm saying is methods of data collection in qualitative research are more in-depth or open interviews, are more about observations, trained observations, observations of certain designated points, doing discussion with different types of people and case study. And those data, those data are gathered, documented, and they become very heavy. It takes a lot of time. It takes more time to analyze those data because they're qualitative, they're descriptive, they're subjective. My perception of the culture. Next. Next, please. Yes. Tools of documentation. How do we document? What kind of records do we have? We can have audio records also. When we find that certain portion of the talk is very important, we can ask the permission and audio record it. If we see some folk dances, folk music, folk stories, we can also video record it. You maintain different types of diaries where you write the daily routine, you write the kind of data that you get, you write the emotional diary. How do I feel? Why do I feel like this? This is my perception. Community maps that people together draw, show me your village. And in the PRA tradition, like participatory rural appraisal, we ask people to use the local materials and show different places. Timelines about history, we can ask how, how much do you remember 40 years back, what happened? How did the village develop? That means there are different tools and techniques which are audio or visual in nature that we develop for documentation. So whatever we are doing in the villages are being documented. Or, and finally, they'll be analyzed, recorded, analyzed. Even we keep some artifacts in some of the PhD thesis in ethnography, even some, some drawings or some paintings or some books can be, can be, can be, can be photographs and kept as such for showing to the people. Next, please. So some of these techniques of participation, take me through your village, transject walk, and, and tell me the details, visual maps, community maps made by the groups, community meetings of the people, and recording them. That means our tools and techniques are not limited to collecting data through schedule alone. I am having opportunity to meet, interact, discuss, observe, live in the village and feel it. This kind of engaging experience in the culture is holistic, total, not only asking and noting down. Next. Important thing is how to manage time. After living for some time, there may be very harsh weather, there may be a rainy season, there may be very cold nights. So I have to understand when shall I get up? When shall I go to the villages? When shall I fix appointment with the people? So that I have maximum output out of my two months or three months stay. 
my what kind of food shall i eat so, so that i can maintain my health strange food sometimes give you indigestion so all this we have to understand shall i take part in socialization shall i take part in the in, in the ceremonies and what should i do what protocol should i should i follow if i am going to marriage shall i give gift how much gift can i give what is within my resources so that i am not misunderstood by the people taking notes writing a lot of diaries reflective diaries transcribing interviews after taking interviews go back and write it down what has happened or when become very familiar ask their permission to record it what i am saying is our tools are very different here our ways and behavior matter how disciplined life i i spend in the field how do i manage so many people so many meetings and still carrying on my research requires lot of training and discipline in the life of a person and for which the guide alone can tell that how to do in many university including the one that i taught in ethiopia we used to give one month training to them in all these aspects how shall they spend time we will they will do will do demo will send them to some village follow them up and see that they are and the results are astounding most of my most of my mid career students who did this kind of research and they do in action research mode that they first they found out the problem and they found out the solution and did it with the farmers they definitely pursued their masters and phd abroad or in africa what i am saying is that once you get so much of involvement of one year or six months or three months you love to read more you love to do more work and your whole perspective is changed and when then if you have opportunity to development you are a more sensitive development worker next please yes any experience on observation method anybody anybody is kasri willing yeah. to share something ada yang punya pengalaman tentang observasi di masyarakat any time in life you have done any observation and you found it useful observation as a method of collecting data i use a lot of it in my work silakan mas syafiq mungkin to... Yeah. yeah, I try to Traffic, explain, yeah. Uh, I'm planning, explaining about my research actually. Observation is, uh, you don't have to put your your effort uh, too high to observation actually. You can see around your places, yeah? Like your uh, facilities in your places, for example, yeah? I'm doing my smart mobility research in my town. How the public transportation is very uh, bad, yeah. So I just see around me about the public trans transportation. I offer my observation is about the public transportation is a bad. I'm looking for the facilities and everything. I think this is observation, yeah. You don't have to put a lot to observe the detail. Maybe for the first phenomena, you can see what the big problem is. Thank you. Wonderful, Safiq. Wonderful. Anybody else? Good. I like it. Interview from someone. Uh, Anybody else? And down. Yeah. No. I'm yeah, sure somebody uh, is willing. Yeah. Ada lagi yang punya pengalaman? Yeah. Pengalaman tentang observasi mungkin? Yeah. Uh, I have a experience. Uh, please, I'm. Please, yeah. Please. Yeah, uh, when uh, I have a um, research about a conflict between uh, government and uh, farmers, yeah, it's a very big and long period conflict, yeah, and I think uh, we need observation about it to understand why uh, this uh, conflict is very resistance, yeah, in the society, like uh, like two or three generations, but it's never solved, yeah. But still, uh, we are uh, researching about it and find out how to have a how to have a solution for this conflict, Prof. Birendra. Very good, very good. This is a very good example. I am a teacher researcher, 
I'm a researcher of trainers. I'm a communication teacher. And I have many opportunities to do observation. And also analyze those observations. Like one is, I often do teacher's research, classroom teaching. I sit down at the back or I put a camera there, the CCTV camera, and from outside I'm watching. So I develop certain parameters, certain criteria for watching. How did the teacher enter into the classroom? What he do, did in the beginning to greet the people? Third, how did he introduce the topic? Was he, was he standing on the podium only or walking? So I develop a different criteria of communication while teaching and give a tick mark on the ones that they are doing and writing my remarks. That means observing, evaluating, and putting my remarks together. This requires training. It's not general observation. So observation can be very general. I see and later on I describe. Second is I develop criteria and on that criteria, I put a tick mark and write small observation. Uh, it was an Australian expert. City has been to Australia, Peggy McDonald. She came from re for radio research or television research in my country, in my university. And she showed me how to do this observation with quality and quantity. We had produced a video on poultry production for the farmers, 10 minutes video, and we wanted to understand whether this video is effective. So only way that we knew that we'll do knowledge test. She said, no, no knowledge test. So you put a screening space, get sample of farmers, let them see it and do observations. And in observation, we made a checklist from, from, the, from the real one to real 20. You know, where does the farmer look? How many times he, he, he is concentrating on it? How many times he's looking this way or that way? She developed parameters of observation, of distraction or attention. And on that basis, we decided how interesting is this for the farmers. What I'm saying is, apart from the other data, observation gives you an empirical way, an experiential way, a direct way of collecting data through your naked eyes about what people are doing and explaining it to them. Next, please. Observation as a method. Yeah, Next. some of my yeah. students uh, answer the questions yeah. and Dang, Deva, and Devita, they, all, they also have uh, some experience Please about me, Devita, what, what did you say, Devita? I had experience. Uh, sorry. Yeah, also Ahmad Fatoni. Yeah. yeah. I observed what was lacking in the cages of builders. I accompanied by being the FDA, Farmer Development Associate. I always invite builders to share experiences so I can observe any problem. Yeah, very good, very good. So my question here is that observe and how to make it more systematic, uh -huh. more scientific, okay. more based on criteria. So mm -hmm. one is simple and technical observation that he was telling about. I go and see what is lacking. Second is develop some hypothesis, develop some assumption about, <clears throat> about what is happening, that what kind of farmers will find it more effective, what kind of farmers will at a later stage, and then use the science of observation to verify that. Observation in a natural setting. That means teachers are teaching, and if I enter into the classroom, this is unnatural. Obtrusive. That means it will it will it will affect their privacy. So if I can observe from the other room, it is much better. Or a door that is painted in a way that teachers do not see me, so that I can have greater accuracy. And I can also observe for those who cannot speak. Observation is, so that means observation is a very convincing method, empirical method, you know, the whole science is based on empirical. That is something that we can experience. But how to make scientific requires another training. It requires another workshop, only on observation, how observation can be made as a scientific tool. Here I'm telling that this can supplement our other ways of collecting data. Next, please. 
Uh, yeah. Prof. Prof. Uh, Birendra, we have 15 minutes to go, and after that, we have a discussion. 15 minutes. That's okay. okay. Yeah. Is it okay? Okay. 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 These are different ways of observing. That is, is it casual, just going and observing, or it is systematic based yeah. on certain points? Is it direct? That we sit there and observe, or we sit from a different place and observe through CCTV camera? Is it a controlled situation in which there is no other obstruction, no other outside, or it is natural in which they are taking? Is, is it technical, that is use of certain devices, or it is just by eyes? Is it participant, that means where I am a member of the group, people know that I am there as them, or I am an outsider. That means the, the, the nature of observation or the result varies according to that. Next, please. You can move a few slides, move a few slides, so that I can move a few slides more, 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 yeah. Yes. Interviewing in, in ethnography or qualitative research is a very skilled job where you need patience, where you need techniques of communication, where you will need techniques of opening people up when they are not able to come out, when you are able to, to explain to them the questions that you are asking and if they are not understanding. You are able to probe them. You, you are asking the farmer and he is giving a wrong answer or a deviant answer, different answer. How will you probe? How will you ask them to verify or give you more explanation? That means interview is a very skilled job and this requires you to complete the task within a given time. And that is why there should be a training in interviewing. How to open people up, how to probe them, go into the depth, how to clarify if there is a confusion, how to conclude so that there is a very smooth transition from beginning to end. What I'm telling is, interview is an opportunity to collect data. People are not machines, they are human beings. So how will you treat them well so that at the end, both of you are satisfied? Your whole data depends on the good interview that the person gives. And good interview depends on how systematically you conduct and end in time and have these human elements. You do not hurry through the process. And in the end, you thank him profusely, or if there is a profusion, you give them some symbolic gift or something, or a smile, or a gratitude, or whatever, so that your task is done. They say that in all religions, it is there that do not take without giving. This is a debt that you have to pay sometimes. There are no free lunches in life. So in interviews also, in research also, you should pay something. My students who went to understand indigenous culture in a village at the age of 23, I said, in the end of it, either bring them to the university, have them, let them have lunch in your hostel, or let them see the farmer's fair, or give them some plants free of cost so that they can remember you that a human being had come in the village. Otherwise, they will see that outsiders come, take the data and go, nothing happens. So interview, there has to be an ethics about staying in the village. All the students should be taught that we have an obligation to the people when we are collecting data. This is a very human thing. Next, please. Yeah, we have talked about it. We'll go fast and have more questions from them. Yeah, let's let's go let's go to the picture side when we have pictures. Uh, pictures, pictures. We'll go to the pictures now. We'll hurry up. Yeah. Next. Next, please. Yeah, I am asking certain questions before you ask me. How are ethnographic studies different? Anybody? Pass or fail? Tell me. Ethnography itu berbeda karena apa? Mungkin berbeda dari penelitian uh, yeah. eksak. 
berbeda dari penelitian kuantitatif. Uh, ya. Apa Ini perbedaannya? Bagi, Silakan, Mas Afiq. The difference between uh, quantitative research and qualitative research is about the, the deep of the research, I think. When you're doing quantitative research, uh, quantity research, uh, research that you're doing the the purpose of the uh, research and you, you just answer in the, the end of the uh, the research. But when you're doing qualitative research and you're doing something like the purpose of the research, but the answer is sometimes is different. This is the difference between the quantitative research and qualitative research. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Is it essential to live in the villages, in the communities? Penting enggak. Is it helpful? Untuk, ya. Penting tak, enggak bagi oh. kita untuk tinggal di dalam di desa tersebut. Kalau kita melakukan etnografi. Of course, you have to live in them. You have to you making round and you have to know everything about this village. Thank you. Yeah. Yang lain mungkin silakan jawab. Yeah, other people. Other people, please come up. Students, nggak apa-apa. Bahasa Indonesia dulu nggak apa-apa. Opportunity we have. Ya. Penting nggak kita tinggal di desa untuk sementara waktu untuk melakukan penelitian etnografi? Di chat room silakan. Izin menjawab bu, bahasa Indonesia. Iya, iya silakan. Menurut saya kita perlu dalam melakukan penelitian kualitatif tinggal di desa untuk apa? Untuk kita menjalin yang namanya tadi dicatatkan ada beberapa metode yakni kita harus tinggal di desa untuk memahami culture atau budaya yang ada di masyarakat setempat. Dengan adanya culture kita memahami, kita akan membangun yang namanya relasi. Relasi tersebut muncul dengan adanya kita bisa membangun dengan masyarakat yang ingin kita jadikan sebagai objek penelitian. Dengan begitu kita dalam hal itu sangat mudah dalam pencarian data. Berbeda kalau kita hanya tinggal tanpa adanya membangun hubungan relasi tersebut. Ya, terima kasih Ahmad. Uh, Prof. Virenda, Ahmad said that uh, it is very important ya. Yeah. It's important to uh, stay in the village because we have to build a relation with the key informant so we can... Uh, Take our data, yeah. You know, get yeah. our data because uh, be, without any good relationship, we cannot uh, have uh, data from uh, the target or the informant. Yeah, Fatimatul said it's important, and also, yeah, maybe Mas Kasri. Yes, uh, thanks. Uh, I want to answer about uh, so important uh, with uh, life in uh, in desa because for. Uh, I agree with uh, Ahmad Fatoni's statement or uh, we to uh, uh, know a condition, condition in a society and keep with uh, relation now. Thanks. Kasri, Kasri, I have a question. You have spoken so many times. What makes you interested? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, sorry, sir. I, I went to Uh, no, no, you smile and that says that you are interested in the subject. What makes you so interested? Yes, uh, I am interested uh, to this, uh, uh, this material, material in this material. Why? Kenapa kok tertarik, Mas Kasri? Uh, yeah. Why I am so interested? Uh, because uh, I like uh, study anthropology, anthropology study and Uh, and uh, uh, kebetulan saya juga uh, okay desa. okay Kasri no problem yeah, I yeah. see something in your background in your picture there is some tower what is that uh, at the back of your background there is a tower what is that tower uh, it's some... our university <laughs> your uh, university Barwijaya yeah Barwijaya yeah, Barwija, yeah, yeah. Uh, Barwija University now. oh that's great I have never seen yes. it yeah, yeah. So, That's someday great. maybe <laughs> yeah someday very nice i am so happy city that somebody is writing it requires budget yes yeah. at per pepsi you should advocate for budget not <laughs> yeah, for everyone right. not for every study but mm -hmm. some studies of in depth nature should have budget 
only with budget people can stay there students for students it's difficult it takes a lot of money and uh, to stay in the village and to do different things but then for phd students there is need for such kind of money the budget yeah. Is, yeah. yeah sometimes students uh join our program or our project so we have mm. we uh the lecturer pay for the um for the stay in the the village yeah yeah mm. yeah very nice so so far we have very interesting things i said mm -hmm. i will not lecture and i saw a lot of interest from the students they gave a lot of lectures they gave a lot of information that was not there with me they suggested also about the budget i am very happy that this was interactive i am interested to understand before they ask me question as to which aspects of the discussion people felt more interested more joyful more at peace is there any aspect that attracted their attention that make them feel happy joyous not like a mechanical classroom for me as a teacher it is essential to understand this uh, khalid hmm. 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 Have I asked wrong question? There are so many sensitive yeah. students. They can give me this feedback. Yeah, Shafiq, Shafiq, I think he he wants to say something. Yeah. Yeah. Silakan, mm -hmm. uh, Shafiq. I need to make sure that the the slide. Uh, what number? I I forgot the number of the slide. Please but... loudly, loudly, yeah. Shafiq. I'm not able to hear. Yes, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, I just want to ask you about the the slide. Uh, I I forgot the the slide number what number of the slide, but the, the slide told me that all social data cannot be quantified. I don't think it's a really uh, true <laughs> because I think the all social data uh, from the Qualitative data you can make to quantitative and and the other side also. Thank you. Pretty. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can uh, write down the question, Masafik, because uh, okay, yeah, yeah, because uh, it's very your your voice not so clear. Yeah. 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 Okay then. Uh, Prof. Virendra, I have a question. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, we have um, many many methods of qualitative research, like uh, ethnography and anthropology, and maybe uh, ground research. Yeah. But uh, is it possible for us to use more than one method in one single research? Is Not it always. Possible? Not always. Not always. Like I tell you, one of my MSc students, he worked in a Muslim village in one of the states of India, where people had come from Afghanistan 200 years back. They are called Pathans, very tall people. And there was a strange culture in the village. We wanted to study communication and development in that village because the community was very much interactive together. They had a mosque. And whatever, whatever is announced from the mosque, everybody will follow, even the Hindus. So we wanted to understand whether this communication in that Muslim village is responsible for development that had happened. And most of our colleagues had done the quantitative research. We wanted to do both. So first, we use key informants. Second, we do certain observations and then finally, in that brief period of time, a small questionnaire. I tell you, City, it was so much revealing that even the questionnaire became very much qualitative because we came to understand that the development is happening not because of government programs, but because of people working together. 
it was very strange. So <laughs> yes, we can, but only in PhD researchers, long time researchers, it is possible to use more than one method. But we should use some community interaction in most researchers so that we can get a feel of the community. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Uh, there's a uh, Shafiq also already wrote uh, his question. You say that all social data cannot be quantified. Is that true? All the data? What does all social data cannot be quantified. All social data so, cannot yeah. be quantified. Maybe uh, he's thinking about Likert scale, maybe. Yeah. yeah. There are scales. But as a researcher, you should know the limitations of the researches. When you are converting them into questions and the, the scaling, the rating, the way people rate them, there is no rule about it. People might, might make assumptions. How do they make assumptions? You do not know. So you cannot take that for granted. But then yes, if you support this with other methods of observation or discussion, then probably you get a clue why this is coming. I told in an example that in a management research of PhD of a very reputed university in India, the boy was not able to answer why this is the best extension management there. He had done all the scales, all the analysis, but since he does not have the social data observations, he does not have the mixing with the people, he is not able to answer why these factors are more important. So what I'm saying is that yes, it is possible to quantify. We have certain technical devices also, machines also that can record for you, but then getting these qualitative data support your quantitative data. That is what I'm saying. So method mix is essential, not fully quantitative, not fully qualitative. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Maylina, yeah, this, uh, she's raising hand. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, am I audible? Yeah, you are. Uh, you are, okay. but uh, yeah. Please uh, speak loudly. Oh, okay. Um, thank you for the opportunity. So my name is Helena. Um, this is kind of new to me, you know, like the community research. So I've been, I've never been doing this before. So I, I have a kind of, uh, I'm sorry, is my way cool? Uh, Ms. Melina, uh, Maybe mm -hmm. your signal is not too good. Maybe you can write down your uh, okay. question. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mas Shafiq, do you want to say something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Prof. Yeah. Uh, I think your presentation is uh, very good because uh, some of people think that qualitative research is uh, is not really good enough uh, rather than uh, quantity, but. Uh, I'm not the only, uh, you know, like this uh, uh, statement. Actually, I like a uh, mixed method. Actually, I'm doing my my PhD uh, dissertation with uh, mixed method. I'm doing uh, the quali quantitative first, and after that, I'm doing with qualitative. But the problem now, they're looking for novelty and everything. So you have to do with the new, uh, you know, like. Uh, a new method or with the new uh we have a lot of uh, tools you know uh, some people doing the new one and they but um, something you do it not the with the right thing so do you have any suggestion for us because everybody looking for the new tools and sometimes it's not match so thank you yeah good Sefik. maybe because i become older i I do not advocate that every time we should have a new tool. More important is getting to the truth. Science is more about truth. With which method we'll get the truth is more important. And it's still more important <coughs> for a sensitive person like Safiq is that what does he want? No researcher, no guide should force you to use new tools. The way you feel convinced, a bit of quantitative, and supported by a lot of explanation. That only can make you a real scientist, not only use of new tool. I am very much against the, <coughs> the, 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 the intensive analysis and other methods that have come. Because 
you lose the truth sometimes in lot of analysis. You lose track of this. So your understanding will come only when you observe, you experience, you feel. Even if the advisor does not allow you, you do it at your own so that you become knowledgeable about that particular data. It is as essential as doing an in-depth interview and an in-depth review of literature. Like review of literature gives you idea about various ways in which your problem has shaped up. Your qualitative methods give you an idea about what is the reality there. So you must have some way to check reality. Don't go by novelty alone. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I understand, yeah. Masha Fik. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Anya. Well, <laughs> we, yeah, students are forced to have a novelty, usually with uh, PhD students. Uh, maybe I have uh, some uh, a suggestion. Maybe you can uh, use systematic literature review, SLR, yeah, before, mm. uh, yeah, systematic literature review. So you have to collect of, uh, all of literature, literature from uh, good resource, yeah, source, data source and journal source from uh, Scopus or maybe was, yeah. And then uh, after you have collected all the journals that can support your uh, mm. Research, yeah, and then you do systematic literature research, and then you can combine, or maybe you can uh, combine, and yeah, maybe yeah, you have to find out, yeah, what's new, yeah, yeah, what's new from all of the literature for your uh, research. That's maybe you can find your novelty for your research, yeah. Mm -hmm. SLR is very important uh, to do for PhD students before they do uh, their research, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Miss Melina? Miss Melina? Are you there? Yeah, I think it's, it's not there. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions, students, before we... Uh, uh, okay, Devita Amelia. Ya. Silakan, no. Devita. Terima kasih, Ibu, atas kesempatannya. Uh, hello, Mr. Birendra. Uh, my name is Devita Amelia, one of the students or the faculty of Animal Husbandry, University of Brawijaya. Previously, I apologize if there was a wrong word because I like fast in English. All right, I ask for permission to exprof. According to Prof, how long is the ideal time to study culture in the location used as a place of research? If problems arise because of the culture, what do you think needs to be done? Is changing the location where we need to change the concept or continue research at the location? Thank you. Hello. Are you listening? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can hear. Very it. good question. Davita is very smart young woman from Indonesia. Her questions are very sharp. Yes, we do not change the locations often. The guide gives you the the locale and the topic after a lot of review of literature. The there is a training, there is need for training. I and city can organize such trainings, sensitivity training, as to how to cope with a new culture. Girls are not sent to a dangerous culture or a culture where they have more difficulty. Looking at our, our South Asian perspective, we do not force girls to go into those places. But then normally two to three months is good enough for master's research. Probably a semester is given for master's research. So out of six months, two to three months, should be done like this. And I advise that for master's research, we should have a combination of stay plus quantitative data. That is qualitative research supported by some quantitative. That will give uh, enough perspective to a master's research because we believe that master's students of social science, including extension education, will go for development work or in corporate sales and marketing so this much sensitization will prepare them for the field. For a doctoral student, at least six months is required. 
very often we do not change the field or the place where we stay. Finally, let me tell you, I was attracted to this kind of research when I was doing my own PhD research on a field that I love so much, training. I wanted to design a training for trainers. And I was thinking how much sample to take or how shall I research that I, in library, I read a research, communication and development in India, a study of two villages. I was shocked. This was a study done in Minnesota, communication development department, and they had only chosen two villages and then case studies in depth. And from that, they have come to a conclusion. So what attracted me most was that is it possible to draw a conclusion out of two villages? But then what satisfied me was a lot of in-depth multidisciplinary review of literature had been done. And that had given enough background that these two sample villages are enough to suggest the relationship between communication and development. So do not go by the usual sampling principles and others. When we do like this, a careful selection to every research becomes really a symbol of truth. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Devita? That's enough, Miss. Uh, thank you for the wonderful answer, Prof. Virendra. Thank you, Devita. Any other question? Or comments or feelings? opinions, how to make yeah. such, such lectures better, effective? Uh, yeah. Kasri? Yeah. yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thanks for... Uh, I want to ask to Prof. Gurindra. Uh, you can share your uh, experience uh, to about ethnography study uh, and you can uh, uh, story about your life in internet to collect data, uh, data in society. So, yes, city, can I? Can I? Uh, can you I can share your experience about uh, 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 ethnography. So, uh, I think he wants to know uh, about your experience in ethnography. Uh, research, research, yeah. ethnography so, yes. yeah. Can you move a few slides? I still have here. Yeah, more, 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 more. More, more. You're going back. Ahead. Yeah. Further, further. Hmm. I've given some examples. More, more, no, no more. Anyway, I'll speak. No more. <laughs> okay, I'll speak. No more. <clears throat> I have mentioned in the beginning, we, we wanted to have a newsletter or farmer's magazine designed for livestock farmers. Because in the hills, the university that I was working in was in the hills. Livestock was the main source of information. University was already publishing a magazine and we thought that this is good enough. So one of my master's students wanted to verify what would be the best way to publish a magazine for the livestock owners. We took, the student went to the villages, saw the problems and sorted out certain topics on which the farmers are already needing information. He went back to the publication department and selected certain articles that the scientists have written and took these articles to the farmers. Farmers could not comprehend any of these articles. And they found that they are very less effective because they are in alien 
different language they are in very much <coughs> examples are not understandable english terms are there and then we had a focus group discussion with the farmers as to what would be the best way to publish a magazine on livestock farmers so different groups were made by the farmers and they decided who will do what and then articles were written by the farmers themselves and taken to the scientists scientists were amazed as to the way they were doing doing the articles are totally ineffective for the farmers in fact you know a participatory newsletter was designed based on such data and this was very much appreciated by a national research committee what i am saying is ethnographic ideas are possible in any field that you want provided you are ready to interact with the people and know the truth thank you very much kasri for asking the right question how to do it time is less i have many more researches that i can narrate but probably time restricts me to go ahead thank you yeah thanks sir good kasri you thank are you much kasri uh, we have two questions yeah two last questions the first one uh from fadlil uh, sorry sorry from um rosida how to make a specific question when record scale is a mandatory especially when using mixed method research what is this uh how is how to make a specific question when liquor scale is mandatory especially when using mixed method research oh i'm not talking about scales and measurements today i'm only mm. talking about descriptive research so this question is not very oh, much yeah. for me yeah 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 because a questionnaire is kind of yeah. specific yeah i'm not i'm not yeah. dealing with that today okay. maybe some other day okay thank you oh yeah uh thank you uh prof birenda is melina melina you ready now <laughs> yes ma'am sorry i lost the connection is now okay for me to speak is it still not clear yeah 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 yeah, yeah. is it is it uh, this clear yeah okay. your voice is clear yeah last question yeah. last question okay um um uh okay this actually this qualitative research is kind of new to me so i'm wondering like um if we're speaking of qualitative research we can more easy to make sure the validity it is also supported by the calculation that the formula can also be accepted by all over the world you know um regardless of the uh, the, the the versions so um how can we make sure the validity of this qualitative research because suppose we have two social scientists right and they have the same purpose maybe they they have the same methods and maybe they are in the same background but they may have uh, the different answer and also the different um, results so how can we validate uh, make this valid and also is this also uh, I mean like this is related to generalization like whether this is transferable or not um is my question clear very much clear like you thank you yeah your communication is very clear but you did not listen to what i have said i said all ethnographers though from different backgrounds they study same rules of staying in the community of interacting with people of writing their diary writing their emotions and also collecting some quantitative data they are always looking out for validity how to validate the descriptions that they have written there is a lot of burden on ethnographers to validate their their descriptive data because they know that what they are telling is in the cloud only they have experience and that is why they have to to find out the evidences and these evidences can be in the form of artifacts in the form of audio in the form of video and sometimes at the end of it they also have certain opinion survey or certain quantitative data collected so that they can pull together second thing you must understand melina you are very smart good communication 
that all ethnographers or all descriptive researchers, they do a lot of multidisciplinary review to understand the context in, in which they are studying. And that is why their questions are very clear. And even the data that they collect at the end is an evidence. So in last 100 years or 80 years of anthropological research or ethnographic research, they have come out with accuracy. In the end, let me tell you, before the Britishers came to India to conquer, they had sent anthropologists. And there are such accurate description of the caste, of the religion, of the different mysteries of the religion, that even we, the Indians, do not know so much. It is because they stayed there, they married there, they had children, they led their life, and then they come out with the truth, which is holistic in nature. The, the nature of ethnographic or qualitative research is holistic, natural, comprehensive, combining all the facts. <laughs> when you read more, you will understand more about it. Thank you for this sharp question. Thank you, Melina. Sorry for your lost connection. Yeah, yeah it is very uh, interesting uh, to hear that before uh, India conquered by British, they sent yeah. anthropologists. Yeah, wow. <laughs> It's very, yeah, it's new for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, before we close the class, Prof. Birendra Kumar, do you have um, a takeaway message for us who are studying uh, qualitative research? Did you ask a question? Yeah, do you have what? a key message for us? Yeah, yeah, takeaway yeah. message for us. Yeah, takeaway message for me, from me, I had already decided. I wanted all the students and professors who are listening to me to find research as exciting. Research as a human process, not as a mechanical way of going collecting data. One. Two, human interaction is very challenging. Whenever we are going to do observation or interview, we should understand this. Other people are affected by the way I behave. So I have to train myself. How shall I go into the community? How shall I do interview so that it is very much comfortable to them? In communication, we teach that before you communicate with others, you should know how your verbal and non-verbal non communication affect others. Each one of us affect others. And if we do not become conscious about it, we cannot transform the situation or cannot get the correct data. At the end, I want all of you and a student like Kasri and Tavita and Melina, Sefi, to enjoy the process of research. Knowledge is power. The more knowledge you get, the more power, the more joy you will get in your life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Birenda. It's a very beautiful message. Yeah, I, I also have a one uh, sentence from you. Yeah, to observe for those who cannot express. It's a very powerful uh, sentence for me. Okay, thank you. I think uh, the lecture is finished. Uh, Bu Rosida, Miss Rosida, maybe you can uh, close our uh, session today. Okay, and give right. me some feedback if anything was interesting tell me that rashida yeah rashida? yeah professor mm -hmm. maybe in next <laughs> in next agenda i will ask you about qualitative research because uh in my university especially in my major uh qualitative research is like uh being how to say that what apa uh dipandang sebelah mata how to say that yeah, qualitative qualitative research is not a uh, yeah. Sometimes we uh, our 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 environment yeah do not see qualitative research as a valid <laughs> valid method <laughs> to true, true, get data. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. True, yeah. True. Oh, uh, Ros Miss Rosida, uh, I have uh, something to say. Uh, we have a uh, Fadil uh, send a direct message for me. Yeah, he wants to say to. Prof. Birenda, uh, that um, they are, he is sorry about the disaster that claimed 300 lives occurred due to the collision between three trains in India. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, 
So, yeah. And then uh, we also have Nanda Ayu. Yeah, Nanda Ayu say that, yeah. Sometimes ago, I had to find out, have to show about the condition of farmers field in India. Later, I got information that many Indian farmers have committed suicide due to the lack of improvisation in agriculture, disproportionately low wages, no regeneration and government policies to help uh, rice fields. Yeah. Um, do you have uh, any? I have read it. Yeah. I have read it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank him for this important information. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have yeah, not done any qualitative research on that. For, for that, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Maybe uh, I think uh, that's enough, Prof. Uh, Virendra and Silakan, Bu Rasida, to close the session today. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Siti Aziza. Uh, I think that's the closing remarks from Dr. Siti Aziza. Is as a clue to the end of today's event. To close this event, let's say Alhamdulillah together. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Professor Birindra Kumar, for giving us insight about qualitative research and how to implement it. And thank you so much for all audiences for the attention and discussion. I hope we will meet again in the future agenda. I apologize if there are any mistakes or inconvenience that may occur in this event. Thank you so much, and the event is dismissed. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof. Virendra. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Virendra. Silakan mengisi daftar hadir bagi semua. Yeah. So I will close the session. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody.